Have you ever been a split second slower in practice than you thought you were? For years, the stopwatch was the go-to tool for timing sprints, and for some it still is. But it's got a big problem. Human error. You can't be a millisecond accurate if you're relying on a thumb tap. That's why so many new technologies have hit the market over the past five years, promising to bring competition-level accuracy to your training sessions. But they aren't all created equal. In this video, we're gonna break down the most popular, consumer-friendly sprint timing systems and rank them from basic to ultimate. And by the end, you'll know exactly what tools might be interesting for you to invest in and understand the hidden flaws and benefits of each system, so you can train smarter and more accurately. One note, however, before we start with the first device, this video is not sponsored. We are not being paid to say anything about these products. And second, while we have used a lot of the products talked about here, we did not use all of them. The first tool we already named, the stopwatch. An iconic piece of equipment, and whether it is to time all-out sprints, flies, tempo runs, or even the breaks between your runs, it is a must-have for each athlete and or coach. While they all look the same, there are some differences between stopwatches. You've got those that just have a start and stop button, you have those that take lap or split times, and you have those with or without a memory to hold multiple reps or splits. Before you buy one, just make sure you know what you want to get out of your stopwatch. Most of the stopwatches are also relatively cheap, at around 20 to 50 US dollars, you can have yourself a great stopwatch that will last your whole athletic or coaching career. During the intro, you already heard us mention the human error that inevitably comes when using the stopwatch when timing sprints. For a trained coach, this variability can be a tenth or a few tenths of a second to the true time. But depending on what you or your athlete needs during a training, this might be far from the accuracy you want. Aside from that, there is also the between rater variability, meaning if you let two different coaches time the same sprint, they will very likely time a different outcome. You can somewhat standardize how you measure sprints with a stopwatch by starting the time on the contact of the first foot hitting the ground, while standing perpendicular on the finish line to make sure you can stop the time measurement when the chest of the athlete crosses the finish line. But even doing that is not enough to eliminate all the error you have from reacting on your athlete and pressing the button on the stopwatch. And that's why we place it in the basic category. It's easy to use, it's perfect for tempo training sessions, anaerobic sessions, keeping taps on the rest periods, and it's relatively cheap. But it lacks accuracy for the real sprint sessions where the difference between runs is a few hundredths of a second. So make sure you always have one or two with you, but know when to use it and when not to. Before we go to the next tool to time your sprints, if you've been getting value out of this video, make sure to subscribe to the channel to stay up to date on videos like this. Second, know that all the tools we discuss can be found in the description below if you want to do some more research. Now on to the next tool, which is an interesting one, because a lot of brands have adopted this type of time registration that being timing gates. These work via a transmitting unit and a receiver unit that get placed on the in and outside of the lane that you or your athlete is running in. When you sprint through the gate, the time starts to record, takes a split time or stops the recording. This time recording then gets sent to either an external device, your phone, or it gets displayed on the finishing timing gate. The most known timing gates are the smart speed timing gates by Vault, who have a basic timing gate setup called Dash that costs between $40 or $2,400, and they have the professional smart speed plus system that costs between $130 and $4,160, depending if you get the annual or monthly subscription and how many gates you want. The second highly used type of timing gates is the Brower TCI Sprint timing system that costs around $700 per timing gate. Now there are other brands that make almost identical timing gates, like the Exergo G Sprint that costs $700, or the OVR Sprint that has a starter kit at 450 euros. But no matter the brand, these timing gates almost work identical to each other. The big differentiator is mostly the software or app that comes with the product or as a yearly subscription, that makes one better or more expensive than the other. While these timing gates require a few minutes of time to set up, they're relatively easy to work with. Just make sure that both ends of a gate are lined up, so the signal is received by the reflector unit. Two big downsides of these timing gate systems is one, that the gates are mostly put on a tripod that takes up the full width of a lane. So if you set up one lane to sprint in, you're actually occupying three lanes. Two, because of the laser gate, there might be some inaccuracy in the time measurement depending on the height of the gates. Most companies advise the gates at hip height, but if you put them a bit lower or higher, you risk triggering the gate with your knee or arm slash hand, instead of the hip. This might cause an error of a few hundredths or a tenth of a second. If we would solely look at the technology of the time measurement, we would put a whole subgroup of timing gates under the good category. 
but due to the big differences in data management, app and software that accompanies the timing gates, we're gonna place the Brower timing gates, the OVR sprint and the Exergo timing gates in the good category because their software is a bit less advanced compared to the Vault ones, which we'll put in the great category. This is because the Vault ones have a software that groups test data from all their devices under the specific athlete's profile. Getting accurate and usable data is one thing, but having all of this data grouped together under a usable profile and with clear graphs and forms is a nice extra to have. Our next timing tool looks a lot like the timing gates, but works a little bit different. That are Bluetooth cones that send out a signal to a chip that is worn by the sprinting athlete. The most known company that does this is Freelab. The Freelab cones can be set in start, lap or finish mode to capture a fly sprint with or without 10 meter splits depending on how many cones you have and the distance you want to place between them. They also have dedicated start cones that even give starting commands or a starting pad so you can time starts with a block or from a 3 point start. Now these cones can be accurate up to 100th of a second and I deliberately said can be because there is some inaccuracy if you play around with the chip placement during or between training sessions. We have done some tests with athletes wearing two chips next to each other and we never got a time difference bigger than one tenth of a second. Depending on the length of the run, one tenth is again a big deal and this timing difference can also be because of the circular detection field of the cones that can give minor differences in time recording depending on how much to the left, right or center you or your athlete is running in his or her lane. Especially if you do a short run with 10 meter splits, there might be some error in the time recording. We truly love working with our free lap timing products. They are easy and quick to set up, it takes a long time before the rechargeable batteries run out of juice and recently Freelab released a premium chip that can not only time your sprints but also detects reaction time, step length, step frequency and number of steps. The My Freelab app works seamless and is a really handy way to keep track of the times of each athlete and also lets you dedicate a specific chip to a specific athlete. Because these Bluetooth cones have a lot of their pros and cons in common with the vault timing gates, we also place them under the great category. Next up is the laser time sprints. Not to confuse with the laser timing gates we discussed earlier. This laser is placed directly behind the sprinting athlete and constantly tracks and calculates the distance from the laser to the athlete with a high frequency. This constant tracking of the distance gets sent to a laptop, PC or tablet and gets laid out in a graph. Because of the high sampling frequency, this way of timing and tracking sprints is very accurate and can display a lot of the interplay between step length and step frequency and thus give a lot more insight into an athlete's run. This type of sprint timing is done a lot in biomechanical labs but there are also consumer-friendly devices like the Muscle Lab Laser Speed. The downsides of this type of sprint's timing is that it on one hand is quite a bit more expensive than our previously mentioned timing options and on the other hand it requires the sprinting athlete to really sprint straight forward because if he or she deviates a bit to the left or right they might lose track of the laser beam which can cause error in the time measurement. Now most software programs have settings that can let you erase those missed pieces of the run and correct for the error. Because of the high accuracy, we place the laser timed sprints in the perfect category. But on our top spot we have video recordings. And this might surprise you because it isn't some fancy very expensive tool no one heard about. But your on-device camera app nowadays really packs a punch. Most smartphones right now have slow motion capabilities that let you record in 120 or even up to 240 fps. This allows you together with some cones or poles to make your own timing gates. This recording can afterwards be analyzed within certain apps like MySprint or ViewMotion or you can even do it for free with Kinovia. Because you record the video in 120 frames per second or more, you have a frame for every 100th of a second. This way you have a very accurate timing. Video recording a run also isn't subject to Bluetooth malfunctions etc. You're also not limited to doing one test only. You can do flies, starts, take splits. As long as you've put up some cones and create a clear start and finish, you can accurately time anything. Video recording paired with apps like the MySprint, Sprint Timer Photo Finish, OnForm, ViewMotion and MotionRQ are not only really helpful for accurate timing, but some of them can also offer tremendous insights into you or your athlete's capabilities. To sum it up, it's cheap and very accurate and that's why we place it as the ultimate sprint timing tool for your training sessions. Do you agree with our ranking system or would you have placed certain tools in a different bracket? 
let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, give it a like, it really means the world to us. And if you want to know how we rank the most used overspeed tools, click the video on the top right.